but let's talk about itch, itchy skin, because I have so many uh, elderly patients who have terrible itches and I don't know what to do about it. Um, but we didn't have an expert in the field, but I did have a lovely article about uh, itch in the elderly, so that's really what I'm going to be pre presenting about. And I'll just take that back right now. I'm not presenting. We're going to have a conversation about this because I think the knowledge in the room is pretty darn good. And I'm just going to create a moment and a framework for us to talk about it. So feel free to jump in with your uh, moisturizer ideas because uh, I'm not the expert, but I will be looking at Dr. Morley in case she has some bright ideas or if I really get off base, she can pull me back. <laughs> All right. Sound like a plan? And it was all a bit last minute, so there will be a lot of screen looking at by myself, which is just the way it goes. So, paritis, fancy word for itch. I might just use itch because it's easier. We all know what it is. It's so much a big deal. It's like pain. It's as bad as pain. It affects that core part of your brain that you can't ignore, right? Breathe, eat, scratch the itch. They're all right next to one another. So... I'm going to get right to the, the one of the meats of the of the whole talk. This is my advice to you about uh, itchy skin. You can't go wrong with this kind of stuff. Less soap, less washing the body parts, and use warm water, not hot water. And don't put weird things on the skin. And I'm just going to stop right here because this is from an article. So I'm not sure why someone would put topical alcohol and high concentration lactic acid on someone's itchy skin. There must be some therapeutic use on it. I just don't know it. Anyone? No? Okay. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. Uh, but everyone likes uh, petroleum jelly, Vaseline. Uh, all dermatologists are a big fan of that. We will talk about why in just a sec. So if you're going to talk about itch, you've got to talk about nerves. You've got to talk about skin because it's a combination of nerves on your skin that are making you feel itchy. So let's <laughs> review. Subcutaneous tissue, dermis, epidermis. Cast your eye onto this nerve. Look at that. It goes right up to the epidermis, right to where things might be a bit itchy. And that's an important part for you pathophysiology keeners. It's the C-type uh, sensory fibers that are going to be transmitting itch. The other types transmit pressure and temperature and stuff like that. But we want to worry about C-type. And it does get very close to the epidermis. So the epidermis seems to be the key. Here's a zoom in on the epidermis. We've got cells down here, stratum spinosum, and we've got cells up here. And then these are keratinocytes that have had their nucleus removed, and they're kind of like dead cells. But they, they actually have some, some useful, they actually have some metabolic activity, and they're doing something. So cells like to have a warm, Moist environment. That makes them happy, right? So the body says, hmm, if I'm going to have a warm, moist environment through the whole entire body, right out to the very, very edge, I'm going to need to cover myself in a water permeable barrier. Hmm, how am I going to do that? Well, it's got a delightful plan. What it does is if you look at this zoom in, this layer of cells, these kind of pinky orange ones, secrete uh, a lipid. And that lipid travels up and gets in between and gets processed by these cornocytes uh, into this nice thick water blocking layer that connects all those cells together so it's perfectly water impermeable. So it's all about fat coming up, getting processed, creating this perfectly uniform water impermeable layer so that we can keep the warm wet stuff down here where the nerve is. We want to keep it nice and warm and wet so that those nerve cells and the uh, other cells around that are happy because if they get unhappy, the nerve starts to send signals that it shouldn't be sending. It starts to get a little agitated. So uh, we don't want that because that could be the source of our itch is just uh, an irritated nerve, a C-type nerve. Any questions about that? That kind of makes sense? We need, we need that barrier. That's really important. The body's made a barrier. So as you age, some things start to go a bit wacky. Uh, one of them is we lose that barrier. Other one is we get into an, an immune state, an, an a, a immune state that may Im increase the chance of rashes and other immune stimulated events. And we start to get various neuropathies, which is a fancy word for the nerves aren't working very well. And all these have a potential of increasing itch. 
So let's just look at this barrier function a little bit. Um, it's important for retaining water. That's what it's doing. Uh, except that what happens as you age is that layer that's secreting the lipids, when you're in your 60s or 70s, uh, it starts, actually it's the layer that is processing the lipids, the one above it. Um, up here, this, when you're in 50s, uh, 60s and 70s, this processing of the lipids doesn't work, so you start to get gaps in the, uh, in the covering. And then in your uh, 80s and 90s, we start producing, stop producing the lipids down here. So we start to get a breakdown in this uh, important barrier. This pro-inflammatory state of the skin, I mentioned, increases the chance of eczema as you get older. And then neuropathy. So neuropathy just makes nerves not work well for a variety of reasons. Diabetes is a good common cause of nerves not working well, and that can create itch. Or even if you just get some type of impingement on the nerve, say a spine that's a little out of whack or a muscle that's a little extra tight, uh, you can start to generate itch. Pain, itch, they can sort of go back and forth. So just common causes, as I mentioned, and I'm going to say many times, dry skin. Let's put medications on the list. Let's talk about that inflammation, the neuropathy, and let's not forget about bugs can make you itchy. So let's just walk through these a little bit. I think that's dry skin. That's what you're looking for if you are wondering what it looks like, kind of scaly. There's another example of kind of scaly and also edematous leg. And here's a heel I saw the other day. I sent that to Kenny on the spot, and he said, Slather it in Vaseline, wrap it in saran wrap, stick it in a sock. Don't get up in the middle of the night and slip, and then do that every day for five days, and then eventually that hyperkeratotic stuff will slough off, and you'll get back to regular skin. Other clues that it's dry skin, so we should always be suspicious, even if you can't really tell. Let's say they talk about getting in the shower, and oh, the itch is so much better. Oh, interesting. You get out of the shower, and an hour later, it's terrible. Oh, interesting. I get back in the shower and it goes away and I get out and it gets terrible. So that's a sign that it's a water problem. And in fact, I was sort of thinking for the doctors in the room, we often talk about hyponatremia. It's not a salt problem, it's a water problem. And I've got a new idea, itch. It's not an itch problem or a nerve problem, it's a water problem. So think about that when you're considering your patient's itchy body. Uh, my exception to this rule is people who have hot baths and say, if, when I get in the bath it gets worse. We'll ask them how hot the temperature is, because I don't know if this is my experience with my children and I. If you put them in a hot bath, things get worse. So maybe that might be an exception. Still may be itchy, or, or still may be dry skin. Ah, the, the winter itchiness. I have winter itchiness all over the place, uh, so I'm very familiar with that. And this idea that, doctor, doctor, I'm itchy all over. So don't assume it's actually all over. If they just say here and here, and here, it's not actually, so it's not a systemic itch. And I'm going to be talking about a little bit of that, that difference, the difference between systemic, then maybe we've got a metabolic problem because it really is itchy in the groin and the axilla. That's all over. If it's just the arms and the legs, that that's, might be just dry skin. So back to those principles that I just told you about a couple of minutes ago. Less soap. For our residential care, uh, patients, we're in no danger of bathing them daily, are we? So we don't have to worry too much about that. But we could be using too hot, hot water, and maybe we should just only put the soap in the hairy bits. Because soap, you know that top layer that's doing its important job of being our protective barrier? If you put a piece of sticky tape on it, on your skin, and take it off the table 20 times, you've totally removed that layer. At least that's what the paper said. So it's pretty sensitive. If you scrub or you put soap on there, you're just taking away all that fat that's supposed to be keeping the water in. So that's how you should consider soap. So try switching to that. And then we'll get into what moisturizers really mean. This paper talked about the soak and smear method, which is just an exaggeration of what I just said. So if your arm's really itchy, Nice warm water, pat it dry, then put the moisturizer on. So the idea is we're going to try and, we've lost a bunch of water. Let's put the water in. If we let it soak for a few minutes, 20 minutes, the water's going to soak in to that place where we want it warm and wet. And then we need to seal it in there. Uh, and they say seal it in there and then put plastic on top. So is this crazy? Has anyone ever done this? 
GPs in the room who've been around for a while, you guys have probably told people to do this. Mike's nodding his head. Go, no. Yeah, yeah. And people really do it. Saran wrap. Cool. There you go. This is this is not news. Any other supportive comments? Well, the other thing to do is when you're telling people to use a moisturizer, all the time to use it for the skin to catch. Or all okay. the, you know, not dry. So you can have kind of trapped moisture in the uh, right. water that's on the skin. Any, I'll pause for other comments. Facility people who have experience with dry skin, personal experience. I'm going to get into that. There's sort of different types of moisturizers. There's one that are going to try and add water, so they've got water buried in them, and then there's ones that are just occlusive, and they're using the principle that you don't, you've lost your barrier, let's put one on, or if you've added water, let's keep it in there. But Vaseline, any comments from the family doctors? Yeah, it's messy. Okay, a vino galaxol. Would you consider those, I guess, barriers, barrier replacements, or they're just adding some water and being somewhat of a barrier? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That seems to make sense. Any comments from the audience on baby oil? Mineral oil will be on the list, uh, so I think baby oil would, would account on that. That seems more like you're adding the, uh, the lipid layer and hopefully improving the barrier as well. Oh, here we are. So three types according to the, some looking on the internet. Those occlusives, we already talked about, that's the Vaseline. Then this idea of some of them will add water to the skin and some will even try and bring water in from the atmosphere and keep it near your skin. So, yeah, glycerone and sorbitol are considered the humicants. At VHA facilities, uh, we do have galaxal base and we do have uramol. So uramol is good for holding the water and pushing it into the skin. And the galaxal base is a bit of a oil addition and also uh, is bringing in a bit of a barrier. Yes. Heel cracks, okay. Yeah, it just penetrates really well. Oh, it stings. Oh, it stinks, okay. <laughs> stings, stinks, but works. This one's uh, the same idea. Make it wet, cover it. And this one is like put on a whole moist garment. So, like long johns that are, that are damp. And then put a regular something on top of that so that you're getting very serious about this. <laughs> and Sharana, <laughs> you are, then, then you can go out for Halloween. I don't know what you call yourself, but uh, <laughs> I am the giant peritic man. <laughs> Fungus? It's hard to imagine that a person has got both fungus and dry skin happening in the same area at the same time. I mean, you could have it like groin fungus, but then a really dry arm. So just concentrate on the dry bits and then put the antifungals in the groins or under the breasts. That's what I would say. Any other comments? I don't think we're... Just a sec. Hold on here. Time out. Is fungus caused by wet skin? I suppose damp skin and warm. Warm, moist. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But that's... that's, that's you, you've gone too far. Hmm? All right, so let's pull back out of dry skin calling, causing itchiness. And there are some medications that we can put to blame for this. They go in three categories. The ones that have maybe a flash of red rash, or they have no red rash, and then people just start getting itchy all over the place. And this would be sort of really systemic. This would be bomb and armpits and everything. So we can blame ACE inhibitors, hydrochlorothiazide, calcium channel blockers, and they could have been on the medication for a long time, and it's going to take a long time to, cl to clear it, to prove to yourself that this made the difference. So you can't say, I stopped the medication, and the next day things were still the same. You actually may have to go as long as three months, and maybe even as long as a year. That's what the article seemed to say. 
So this is, in my mind, feels like you're, you're hunting now. You're like, well, nothing seemed to work. Let's start knocking off meds. But it's got to be in your difference form. Uh, then there's just cholecystitis, which is a liver disease, maybe caused by drugs. This is a bit of a stretch. Uh, then you're going to get systemic uh, itchiness. And then there's the real like drug reaction itchiness, where it's dead obvious. We gave him the antibiotic. Two days later, he was covered in red stuff. It's all itchy. I don't think there's really a complication that we're not going to wrap him up in saran wrap and, <laughs> and moist clothes and tell him just to tough it out. Uh, we sort of hinted on this. If it's an itchy rash, you want to start thinking dermatological, because it, rash means like it's red. There's something, there's something there. It's not just itchy skin. Uh, but if they're itching and you can't see a darn thing, then maybe maybe we need to think about drugs or some other disease. And uh, don't be fooled by skin lesions uh, that are just there because they were scratching it. So really, there is no rash, but they've been scratching so hard it's all red. And you're like, oh, I think that's a rash. Maybe we need to call dermatology. No, it's just because they were scratching so much. Uh, so you will see no scratches on their back and no rash. And then you'll start to think, hmm, they say it's itchy, but... There's nothing there, so maybe it's systemic. And of course, it's totally possible to have a systemic problem with dry skin and a drug effect, or some combination of all the differentials in our elderly patients. They come not neatly. And Mr. A is a quote from uh, the uh, paper, which I will give you a link to or tell you how to find it. Things to think about if, it, if you really think it's a real disease, I really think most of these things would be caught by the time they get to res care, but let's keep them in the list for the GPs who are uh, seeing presentations for the first time in their office. Oh, scabies. Uh, any facility want to confess that they once or maybe twice had scabies? Is that possible? Yeah. Or small hands. That'd be so bad if it got into a facility. So that's what they tend to look like. I thought this was interesting when I found this. Uh, this is back to sort of thinking primary care-ish. I kind of thought, oh yeah, flea bites <coughs> and scabby bites, you can see how they could be similar. But this is, they're claiming that there's a bit of a difference. Sort of, I can, I can see the closeness of the, of the lesions. There's a little pustule on the flea bite ones. So that's one way to think different. And carrying on in that theme, bed bugs, the, uh, what's the phrase people use? Walk and eat where the little bug walks along your body and takes a little bite. Say it again. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's the phrase. Yeah. OK, so what are you going to do? I'm just going to skip this because I do zoom in on it later. OK, when you uh, see the elderly patient, good history, looking at the itch, talk about how they do bathing. Uh, check out what kind of medications they've used, been using. Have they been slathering themselves with weird stuff? Maybe acidic acid or whatever that weird thing was. Look for the scabies, look for the dry skin. And if you don't feel like you have a smoking gun at this point, then you can order the basic lab work looking for those systemic diseases. But always, pretty much always treat for dry skin in the elderly. So common. Over 50% of people over 60 have got dry skin. Look for a uh, fungal rash. That's what they're thinking about with doing this um, scrapings or a biopsy. Other good ideas is you can get something, some stuff uh, mixed up, special concoctions using menthol and camphor, which can be soothing. You can keep that in the refrigerator. It's even more soothing when you put it on. Or you can just give them ice packs to put it on the itchy bits uh, while we're getting over the, the bad parts. Steroids. Steroids take away itch. These guys go for a medium strength one. If I came in to your guys' office uh, with an itch and you kind of think it's dry skin, but there's some kind of rash there, would you guys go with medium, low, or high strength steroid? Just say it out loud. Beta methasone. Kind of a mild medium. Okay. Any other suggestions would you guys use? If you're going to, just just to get rid of the itch, just the itchy bit. Start low. Ooh, steroids are dangerous. 
sorry for all, all the text here. So you should get some benefit of the steroid in a few days. Otherwise, it's not going to help. But if you keep doing it, you can get this thing, what do they call it? Steroid addiction. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this is when the skin's so used to having a steroid, once you take the steroid away, it inflames. So that's bad. So they suggest this thing called topical calciurin inhibitors. Anyone have any idea what that is? This one. To, topic. Hmm, okay. <clears throat> Taculimus. Okay, I, that one sounds familiar. To get you out of this bad cycle of being dependent on steroids. Everyone uh, is asked, everyone is asked, okay, I am often asked by the nurses for um, a, a, a antihistamine for the itch. And this paper says it doesn't really work, particularly for chronic. Um, chronic itchy problems. Uh, maybe some first generations might work. That's a type of antihistamine. We usually use the second generation ones because they don't make you sleepy. Uh, but maybe the first generation is one. But then we've got elderly people having their brain affected by, by first generation antihistamines and their balance and they get dry mouth and they're already pretty dry so it's just not the best way to go. So they suggest gabapentin. Anyone ever use gabapentin for itch? Nice. Okay. Burn itch. Okay. Is that post burn itch or a burny itch? Okay. All right. So go back to that physiology I taught you about those C fibers. They're going to be generating that itch signal to the brain, so we want to keep them happy. We keep them happy by the warm and wet by covering up the skin with a nice protective layer so the wetness doesn't go from the warm and wet to the dry atmosphere, which would be its inclination. Less soap. Try stopping some medications, try some gabapentin or mixing some menthol in your compounded steroid and uh, galaxal base. Don't forget about looking for real scabies or a real dermatological condition that we need treated here, like eczema or psoriasis. Good. If you want to look at this article called Pruritus in the Older Patient, a clinical review, uh, you can just Google that and then about the fifth one down you'll find this link which is a PDF to it. Good. End of questions. Perfect. Thank you.